bring us to a place of different ways to love. So when we're talking about this wheel, what we're really um, talking about is the different way in which reality gets expressed energetically. So the traditional view of the last, I don't know, since the time of the Greeks, uh, is that there is four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And it was the view of pretty much uh, predominantly in medicine all over the last, you know, five, uh, several thousand years of that, I guess more of the last 2000 years is when I guess the earth, air, fire, water got into like the main vocabulary. And, and uh, it was um, seen by uh, a man named uh, Temo de Young that there must be something in its combination that would give us a better understanding of what earth, air, fire, and water is. So first, before I go into those pairs, you have to think about what is earth energy? What is air energy? What is fire energy? What is water? So the traditional view of that is earth is grounded. It's solid. It's structure. It's reality. It's material. Um, it's got a heaviness to it. Right? That's earth. Anything that is pushing back physical in nature, that's an earthy quality. And then the air, obviously, is the space or the light or the, uh, the energy of, um, that surrounds us and, and creates an openness around us. And, and so you, there we're talking about already like the, the body and the mind, right? And then there's the, uh, the idea of energy in itself, fire, and, and anything that's changed, even the... the the, the Chinese would view that it, fire is a, um, is, can be seen through uh, a, a radical change of cold, right? That sounds kind of weird, but if you consider that fire in itself is transformation and a massive transformation, like getting thrown into a cold shower, that would be a very fiery thing to do. Mm. So that's transformation. It's change. It's a, it's a rapid, uh, uh, development of energy. And, and then finally, you have um, the soul. And there's many, many definitions of what the soul is, and it gets expressed in different ways. But feelings or water energy would be the energy where everything is just one. We're one with everything. And we're all just kind of merging and collecting. So Air, earth, fire, and water was being explored in mandalas by Carl Jung. And he was kind of going off on many tangents. And, and, uh, and Nalog, or Tamo, was seeing and studying this process. And he was realizing that this had to be, um, this had to be combined in some way. So... His, he had this kind of exalted experience where he was imagining that the number 12 was a really important number. Um, he was seeing that it was very important for music because we have 12 notes. He was imagining that there's the baritone and the, uh, the different types of, of, of um, you know, chapters in, our, uh, in the Bible, that there's a four chapters of, you know, Matthew and, and you know, he's, he's looking at all these different angles and he's seeing these, these, these numbers kind of come in and he goes, well, why, if, if everything's fire and earth and air water, and we're experiencing this, there must be a dominance and a recessive or maybe a primary and a secondary energy. I mean, it's just natural that there's gotta be a vote here. And in that exploration, he started, he was a painter and an artist. And as you can see, he also made puppets to try to embody what that energy might be like. And he took uh, the first glance at trying to pair these energies and goes, hmm, you know, let's look at it literally. What happens if, if you mix paint and you have a fiery type pen, paint? What would that do? with earth and what would be the combination if earth is brown and, and 
you know, fire is red. What would that be? Earth fire. What would that, what, what is the feeling that, that that comes? What's the experience that we have always through art where there's a, that there's an emotional or an, an actual experience that the color itself gives us. And so as he started to do that, he started to recognize, hmm, wow, there's actually a different experience in all these type of energies, right? I mean, when you, when you take, for example, uh, a, a, a little bit more yellow and you mix it in with water, you get a green that has a different energy. And where do we see this in nature? So it's not something to just believe. His, his, his view was that this is a phenomenon that we're actually living at the moment. So we're part of the four elements, whether we like it or not. We're part, we're earthlings. And earth is air, earth, fire, and water. So we have this in our nature. And it was therefore his conclusion that this is the nature of who we are of our personality, of our existence, of life itself. So in combining these, he was starting to come to some conclusions and then he was working ultimately and, and forming a group of people to uh, observe what is, what's the chemistry, what's the magic that happens when you stay and you spend three days just painting air, water and everything that that might, might occur for you. That, that that actually has an experience. Any artist knows that as they experience any art, they start to even become the art or they go into a state of mind. So he was experiencing different states of mind as he was going through the different paintings. And, and he was like, well, it's almost like the, they have a character in and of themselves. That air is a very dominant energy or has a very masculine energy. Traditionally, it's so that you have fire as a masculine quality and air as a masculine quality, right? So they're directing energy, aren't they? Likewise, you have uh, water and earth that seem to be very well attracted to each other, aren't they? And they seem to find each other in a crowd to just kind of go into gravity and, and they seem, seem to be very supportive. Water and earth are great friends. And they have a quality, an energy that's more attractive. There's nothing that water in itself is trying to direct. Hmm, that's really interesting that there's a yin quality or a feminine nature just in the, in the nature of the expression of color as well as water itself. So therefore, if you have a dominance of any feminine energy, that's more than the, than the masculine counterpart, then you would have a, uh, obviously a much more feminine expression. You know? So if you take water and air, then you have a much more feminine energy here much more attractive than you would have air water, which is a little bit more directing. So he was starting to characterize these energies and, and is starting to merge imagery that would be supportive of the idea or, or great metaphors, air water. What is the experience of that? It's like a director, a patriarch, or you know, a pattern, some kind of divine intelligence that seems to emerge when he's working with air water. Likewise, when you have someone with water air that has a much more appreciative nature, a more gentle, a more forgiving or loving energy, a childlike energy. So isn't appreciation even more childlike? And air water being a little bit, having this intelligence, there's knowledge there. There seems to be a knowing about that energy. Hmm. So in this way, he could see that he could, he could even imagine characters. So we started, he started making uh, these, um, these very simple um, uh, masks to see what would, what would happen if you wore that mask. And also he made puppets. And 
being a very playful guy, he was ultimately making these type of games to go, okay, what's the relationship? And he was working with a team of, of people here, right? So they were all giving their two cents about what is the relationship between air, water, and water, air, or air, water, and air, fire. And so I'd like to now go through these and see that how he made that conclusion and what an amazingly deep system, almost magical system this is for understanding reality itself, that reality has a pattern. And that reality is almost magical in its nature when you understand a divine pattern like this. And that you can see many, many uh, different relationships that are both inverse relationships, complex, that are universal. And uh, as well as symmetries and, and areas where when there's conflicts in place of these energies, some energy comes out to the rescue. So any questions about this so far, just how, how he's coming up with this amazing model? If you don't, then I'll just continue. As, as, as you follow my line of thought, I'll just you know think myself into a box and you can get me out, okay? So coming into this, he was imagining uh, these different archetypes. And ultimately, they, these archetypes uh, became, uh, what, what's the album, like Crimson, uh, King Crimson. He, yeah. he saw these, these um, uh, um, and he, he painted them as like what he observed. And it was a really cool uh, uh, way in which he was showing these, these energies. So I'm gonna walk through those so you can see how it, you can personify what the air, water versus fire, earth energy. And just try to come to a place of a playful, imaginative way. Like try, try not to think of this in right and wrong terms because this is in any, any way an experience that you, this, this, is, this works somehow beyond traditional psychology to something that's more experiential that even starts to come, become you as you start to go into this inquiry. So if you take the air water guy, then you look at somebody who has a, almost a definitive line of thinking a directive, the ruler is how he saw that. And if you take the mirror of that, water being the more dominant in air, you have your imagination. And who best has the imagination than a child? So he nicknamed that the child and he gave this one the patriarch. Now we're talking about energy and, and your, your resistance might be at this point going, well, what, what, why are we talking about personalities here? as opposed to energy in itself, is that that's a really helpful way to start imagining how these energies react to others. What would happen if a child was to meet this guy? You can just imagine what that relationship would be. But it's also the same that you may have a side of your personality or times when you are a child yourself. And then how would, you, would this guy show up to you if you're in a childlike energy of water, air. And what energy is the best in order to get yourself in the mood to create, to explore which one is the best to teach, right? So each one has a benefit or strength to its a virtue. So coming across if water, air, is appreciative and it's small and it's tender, then what's the opposite of that? Well, the energy that the two elements that we're missing, right? Fire and earth. So just imagine fire and earth. Where do we see that? What's the expression of that in our planet right now? Fire and earth, volcanic, right? That's where you see fire and earth coming together. Pressure. Intensity, volatile, powerful. Well, that's not what a child is. Child is tender, if anything, weak. 
It needs structure, it needs safety. But if you take fire earth, you have a warrior energy, don't you? Powerful, just look at the color combination there. It's aggressive, it's great, it wants to be great. It wants to expand everything. So there you have a conflict, a universal conflict where the more childlike someone is, obviously the less fire earth they are, the less egoistic they are. And in this way, you're using a psychology that is actually got some kind of physics to it, some kind of weird sy symmetry that the more of one characteristic grows or energy, the less of the other. And so there seems to be an intrinsic conflict there. And how do you reconcile that conflict? Somebody's got, obviously these two guys aren't gonna do it by themselves. What does a child need? Child needs safety, right? So she's, she's trying to get a place where she can find safety in because water is the primary archetype. What does water like the most if the th other three elements? <laughs> Does it like fire? Does it like air? Does it like earth? Loves earth. So it's going to run to its best option to find earth, water, earth. So earth, air, it's a really nice, safe energy. It's an energy of structure, security, reliability. So that's, that's what we can imagine would be like a someone who is a either small tax adjuster or somebody who is uh, an old woman, like a grandmother, who's just there, who's saving and keeping everything for a rainy day. So that earth air energy is very nice for her. So she feels a sense of safety. That almost brings her out. As long as she's safe, then the anxious side of the child can relax now. In other words, there is a negative side to the child that is anxious. And that anxiety is what we would call the shadow side. And with that understanding of the shadow side, what do we do to bring out the best to relieve somebody of that shadow side? So one of the most phenomenal parts of this system is that he's recognizing that between just a simple notion of color, mixing it in, there's an experience and a feeling or a state of consciousness. And just by the state of consciousness, there's a shadow side. What's the shadow side of fire earth is anger, right? Of being an ego maniac and being dominant. That's the shadow side. And that's, ex that's the negative expression is another way of saying that. And so each of these elements have a virtue and a negative side when they're in the combination. And it's part of our natural evolution if we happen to be in one of these archetypes to get out of the shadow, find a virtue, learn from it. We're on the wrong side of the bowling alley in the gutter. How do we get back to the virtue? So when it, someone's anxious, they need security. Earth, they need a ground. They need something that they can hold and be held. They need the body. They need grandma, earth. So here you have a great combination because she has second is air in her archetype, water, air, and then you have earth, air. A woman who is very dry by her nature, very controlling. That's her negative. But see how they both kind of get along. She brings a, a tenderness to grandma and Grandma provides a security and a safety. So you're seeing a natural alchemy between these two elements. 
Water needs a channel in order to feel safe. Otherwise, it's just going all over the place, all over the counter. So air water, I said, is directing energy. And the more that you understand this archetype, the more you're getting into the feeling that you are understanding through language a direction. Isn't that what language and your frontal cortex does? It's trying to bring a, about a divine pattern and an intelligence. It's trying to be right. Quite judgmental, very critical too. It can be overcritical. It can be a know-it-all knowledge in itself. So that's an energy that he saw is very patriarchal. So this is really the, the embodied by when you are in that state. So if you can think of when you're in an air water state and you're bodying the mind, air and water, you're controlling your feelings. Your mind is the dominant force because air is primary. Then you have somebody where the mind rules. And since, and when you imagine when your mind rules your feelings, how are you as a person? What happens there? What you may not even be present to your body. You're just in your world, right? So you're in a knowledge base of language, ignoring, and certainly with this righteousness, not wanting to be a slave or be in your body. Or the queen is another way of saying that, being the, the motherly type where you might have experienced times when you are in your body after a great swim and there's a great sunset or you're just dancing and you don't need to work in an Excel spreadsheet as you jump into the lake through the sensation of your body, earth and fire which is your movement, the energy within the body, earth, fire. It's coming together as vitality. And when that's dominant, you don't need to have to know everything. So you have a classic conflict, the head or the mind and the body. So those two guys aren't going to figure this out. They're going to be in eternal conflict, air, water, and earth, fire. They're two different worlds. They're two different elements. So how do they reconcile this conflict? Well, they go in and they find, well, he needs to lighten up, doesn't he? Air, water. So he needs a little bit of fun, get the broomstick out of his. So he needs to have some fun to, to, to let go. And what, his, what is he trying to do? He's got air water. And he needs to get somehow into his body. How is he going to do that? He needs to lighten up just like all the bankers in town at six o'clock, they go to a pub, they drink and have a good time. They get out of their head. They have, fi they have fun, fire, water coming together. Just think about when fire, water comes together. It's like a boiling over. It has no structure. There is no place that is of direction. It just wants fun, exuberance and freedom. So fire water is the energy of life, fun, a blast. So when you have a blast, then you can finally get into your body, right? You finally can relax, enjoy. Maybe you're dancing afterwards. Now you're back into the body. And your Excel sheets didn't matter at that point. Fire water. Well, what if you've been in your, been in your body and you're just going too far with your body? 
how are you going to get your head in the game, right? One of the negative shadow sides of your body, I suppose when you're in your body, you might know that you, the, the thing that your body expresses most when it's in the shadow side is you're tired. That's a common signal. You're not in the mood. You're not ready to think about the issue. So when you're in earth fire, how are you going to get up to air water? Well, you need to have a sense of passion, right? You need to have your soul expressed in passion, water, fire. And look at when water, fire comes together. Remember, water is now dominant as opposed to fire. Water is now dominant. So we have an attraction energy. Water is dominant. It's a feminine energy as opposed to fire being dominant, fire water being more masculine. So water is very attractive. It's very passionate. It's the drama queen. It's love. It's passion. It's emotions. It's feelings. So you bring feelings and, and passion into that body and then you can get motivated and finally you get your, your head in the game. That's the idea there. So how is, the, how is the fire earth guy when he's being aggressive? How is he going to, what is his whole issue? He doesn't have a lot of, when he's being aggressive, the best thing isn't to fight him. That's just bringing more fire earth energy. So the energy instead would be to give him space, bring some diplomacy, air, earth, peace. He needs some space, air. And he needs to, and because he, air, earth, and fire, earth, they all kind of get, get along together because they have earth in common. Then a very nice observing energy hmm, you have a problem if you're aggressive. Hmm. And that objectivity, air, earth, just imagine when the planes are just kind of coming out. Well, how you feel when you look at a distance and look at things from a distance. That's air, earth, energy. Air coming to earth as far as you can see. That's when you're being objective. So certainly you don't want to bring a drama queen when he's aggressive. Aha, uh -huh. so we're already starting to see there's a chemistry that would be toxic for this when someone is in their shadow side. There are some elements you don't want to add to that, that when it's in a shadowy place. And some elements that are really good for that. And then you have this air fire imagine air fire coming into your life air fire this is that's the and just think of a sunset it's amazing amazement is the energy you feel enlightenment air fire so when you're feeling enlightened that's the energy of electricity that's ruling your mind brightness brilliance he saw that as like a scientist or a wizard energy as you're exploring new paradigms and you're breaking through. And he saw that in the color of yellow and red, sparkling. Brilliance, fascination, amazement, new discoveries. Discovering in itself is an air fire thing to do. Bringing light to things is an air fire thing to do. So you have that and you have also a more earthy side. What's the opposite when you're being totally brilliant? As you're being... Obviously, air, fire, the opposite of that would be earth, water, right? And if it's earth, water, then you're talking of what, just imagine, where do you see earth, water? You see it in the swamp. You see it in nature. Everything's being integrated. 
You feel it in your digestion as everything's being processed. Everything is usable. So you can say that air fryer is rather specific and is separating and distincting and making distinctions, whereas earth water is just, everything's just being absorbed and digested. It's all just part of nature. You have the science versus nature conflict there. And earth water, where do you see that? That's a, that's a really brilliant energy of, of feeling uh, when you're out in nature. So in this way, he started to see that this is, this is really, if you really take this lens, you're starting to see that this is really a part of nature. And, and if you divide the nature of reality into 12 parts, if you decide to do that symmetrically, this is a pretty bright system to do that. Which means that you could apply this to anything. What happens when you have fire air come together? Well, that's just fire is creative, it's dominant, it's masculine, it's directing as well as energy, but it's air, it's got some intelligence, it's got the mind. So there, that's strategy, isn't it? That's being skillful, learning. He, he embodied that as this kind of joker, trickster character. And, and then there's this area where he wants to everything to be kind of surfacey and shallow and fun and quick and quick using the mind. It's a lot different than the Joker who doesn't have a mind, right? Fire water. Here he has the mind, fire air. So the opposite of that would be water earth, when, which is the soul itself going deep. Whereas he wants to keep things light she wants to go deep and go into mystery, go into a place where the moon is, where you're about to go to sleep, the subconscious side, where the soul is. So I've just introduced you to a family, a pretty amazing family of 12 archetypes. Now, Carl Jung went off on a lot of different archetypes, if you've, if you've studied Carl Jung, and he went into dream psychology and all of that. And the argument toward this system, as poetic as well as you might even be skeptical by even the presentation of this, the argument for this more than Carl Jung is that this is symmetrical. It's mathematical, it's reality-based, whereas there's a lot that Carl Jung skews in favor of whatever dream he seemed to have while he was going through and ultimately Myers-Briggs developing that system of extroversion, introversion, you know, thinking and intuition, intuition and all of those things. What he was doing was, at least in the Myers-Briggs, is just taking four aspects that is a great system, awesome. And, and what it does to see a pattern. It's very air watery, isn't it? Myers-Briggs and all of this psychology and air fire, but it's missing some point here that there's a totality of our experience that is beyond a Myers-Briggs scale that is explored in this wisdom in an amazing way. And having explored every system that I have, I, I could, when I landed on this, I found home here, an amazing sense to describe people. And I can't say that I'm the one who saw this uh, by my own. It was recommended by the Institute of Hand Analysis, where they were seeing after trying to organize people uh, in by hands and seeing that there are actually different characters, different people have different hands. But they were also recognizing that same people with similar hands have similar personalities. Hmm. And trying to apply Myers-Briggs or the EPQR or any psychometric test, they were getting egg on their face all over the, all over the place because people are extroverted and, and, and largely, situational, largely situational. 
right? That expression depends on their environment. Whereas here, they can hang their hat on. You either, either uh, someone who embodies as a, as a personality type, air, water, and there's certainly air, water people out there, and there's certainly people fire earth. So in the way that he analog made these nice little characters here, a very funny thing started happening when, we, when you start organizing people who are aggressive. Funny, interesting observation when you start organizing people by air water. Hmm. His view of how their face looks, no kidding, shows up. which seems that he was onto something, that the face in itself is a beautiful expression of you know, this energy. And once you see that, then something really phenomenal starts to show up there. You start to see different uh, patterns of people, tribes of humanity, that just seemed to go on and on and on down the rabbit hole. In this way, by understanding the system, he was seeing a natural psychology, a natural way in which human beings exist. If you're Donald Trump, then you probably have a lot of fire earth energy as well as every other dictator out there, right? So what does Donald Trump's face look like? It's pretty broad and it happens. So that when you have such a system and you start organizing, forget about the hands or just faces, just take the energy of these people and go, hmm, what are all the people that have this kind of aggression? What do they look like? How do they act? And if you were to try to map that system in his poetry, and you might dismiss his way of expressing this poetry because he's an artist, what you might run into instead is a pretty phenomenal uh, pattern. So this is a pattern putting all the 12 archetypes together. And this is the pattern the Institute saw. Right? So a very child innocence energy, a very deep energy, a very fun exuberant energy, uh, an enchanting, um, of drama, a sexy energy, a intellectual, fascinating energy, air fire, a very deep integrative energy, an observing energy, a funny trickster-like energy, fire air, fire earth, aggressive energy, a great energy. I'm gonna make everything great. I'm gonna make America great again. Earth fire, something that holds the soul very well. Excuse me. Yeah, earth fire. And then over here, air water, a philosopher, or earth air, structured, no nonsense, credible, safety, security. Water, air, water, earth, fire, water, water, fire, air, fire, earth, water, air, earth, fire, air, fire, earth, earth, fire, air, water, earth, air. Incredible that we as people seem to embody this, this type of energy as a dominance. Now we're all four energies, right? Certainly we can't be on earth without all four. 
but this largely poetic system, which seems at least by debate, how can energy, how can we be personify an energy? Well, we have to come to this idea that we are part of these 12 elements, elemental combinations, these archetypes. And you see it out in nature. What happens when you see water and air come together? It's so beautiful, isn't it? Morning dew drops. What happens when you see air, water come together? Clouds, and we have words like our header in the clouds. You have fire, water energy coming together like steam, expressive, isn't it? Or water, fire, like a rainbow, beautiful, coming together. Isn't that what we see when we see water and fire? Or air, fire, coming together, the energy of air and fire a sunset or a sunrise or fire air, dominant, forceful energy coming through the air, fireworks or water earth, enchanting the moon just in reflection, earth water, humane, fire earth, powerful or earth fire, just supporting. Air earth objective as far as the eye can see, distant or earth air structure. So he developed this wheel and he saw, he saw from this wheel a, a beautiful um, chemistry. And he was seeing that, well, there's got to be opposites. Has to be. So if, if there are, in fact, opposites, as I've already explored to you, right? Then let's put it on a wheel. Let's see what we got. So if a fool or fire water energy is fast, then obviously the opposite of that is slow, right? The old woman methodical. If the, if the energy of the actress is passionate and intense and wanting intimacy and sexuality, right? And what's closeness? Then obviously the opposite of that is distance, air, earth. If air, fire is the light and logical, then the opposite of that would be heavy, mother energy, earth, water. If the patriarch wants to be on his high horse and wants to know it all, then he's up on the high, then the low part is the slave or the earth, Earth fire, just the acceptance. If Donald Trump, fire earth wants to be big, then obviously the child wants to be small, right? And if the joker wants everything to be empty, be the trickster, empty, void of con content, then fullness is the enchantress of the soul. So having it in this way, he was able to see a divine pattern unfold, a divine pattern that we can all agree what smallness is, right? And we can all agree what greatness is. And obviously there is a yin-yang relationship, an inverse relationship to it. So there's a sacred geometry to this. And as you saw, I was talking, I was flipping back and forth between a feminine energy with, that was dominant water and air 
And then I was flipping over to air water, which would be a more masculine energy because air is an air and fire are masculine. So air and water versus water and air. So you got a masculine mirror of the, and a feminine. You also get a different experience, don't you, of just being in the masculine archetypes. What does it feel like when you are just in observation, right? Air, earth, being at a, at a distance. Just imagine when you're just being in that, being at a distance, observing, as opposed to earth, air, being somebody who is in structure and security has a different feeling, doesn't it? Observation and distance versus structure. It's almost like you're using two sides of your brain, aren't you? So you're using a, a, a side that is more fixed, you would say, the Newtonian left brain when you are structuring. And then you have this kind of open world of the quantum world in your right brain, air earth. So he started to see, okay, all right. So we've got, we've got another phenomenon starting to happen when you pair all these guys, feminine and masculine. And you're starting to see that there's some that are really um, on an outer journey, seems to be dominant. When I'm structuring ideas methodically, I'm out in the world. And when I'm using knowledge and I'm deciding, that's I'm going out in the world, I don't do that. I'm go, as I'm deciding, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is the way it is, and I'm directing the energy. That's an outward expression, isn't it? And when I'm being passionate, that's a lot different. That's a real expressive energy. Or when I'm being the warrior. You know, so that's kind of an outer journey. As opposed to an inner journey an open journey where things don't have to be so fixed, right? So this wheel is also revealing two worlds and, and a world that wants to go outward where things are fixed and another world that is becoming inward, open when you're in observation, air earth. And then you go into a place where you are free and you go into your body, earth fire, and you have fun and freedom, the fool. And you go into your imagination and appreciation. You can do that all day long. You're just going to go deeper and deeper into a, a, a more transcendental open state. Observing, going into your body like meditation then going into freedom and fun, and then going into imagination. Just do that all day long. You're going to be in a different place. You're going to be in a pretty deep, open, transcendental place. You're accessing just by the nature of this energy. You're, this energy is starting to do something to you. It's starting to move you. So this is where things start to go into a very interesting pattern. In addition to these 12 archetypes, it seems to be that there's some archetypes that are wanting to go on the outer world, like when you got to be a warrior and then you got to structure ideas and then you got to be a, a patriarch and be knowledge and driven. You got to be passionate. So some of these archetypes are clearly on an outer journey. They're, they live there in that world, as opposed to other archetypes that seem to be more on an inner journey. So having this knowledge starts to expose that there's a wheel, there's a way that energy is moving either outward or inward. And one thing we can all agree is that we have a mind, body, spirit, and soul, right? I guess we all systems seem to have that expression. 
And that way of describing things, you could say, well, if this is reality, and if this is the nature of reality, then which one would be the best suited to be the mind? Air, right? All the air archetypes. Just another view here that has been developed by Bran, who's currently present, who's been working with the system for about 30 years, you know, taking that and developing it further and seeing, wow, there's a lot of connections here that are giving us a wisdom. We have a mind, air, air, fire, air, water, air, earth, all at the top. It's just the same wheel that you saw. It's just not in color this time. And you have a body over to the left, earth, air, earth, water, earth, fire. And then you have a soul, water, air, water, earth, water, fire, water, energy. And then you have your spirit, the energy, fire, earth, fire, air, fire, water. And since we're really talking about a masculine polarity and a feminine polarity, then we're looking at the polarity of what is the most masculine of these three guys. Well, here you got air, water. He's mixed with, with the feminine, air and water. Air and earth, that's mixing a masculine with a feminine. But air, fire is masculine and masculine. Air, fire, which makes it a cardinal archetype. So therefore, it has an energy of space, of openness. And its shadow, of course, is getting into, you know, getting lost in its thought way up there. Air, fire. Also fire, air, it's mirror. That's also a cardinal energy. It's equally as masculine. Fire, air, and air, fire create a polarity. Ah, so now we're starting to get into some kind of electromagnetic field, right? Because this is very electrical here. And earth, water, the body, solid, and the soul, Water, earth, earth, water is very feminine, 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 not earth, air, not earth, fire, they're a mix. Earth, water is pure feminine, so is water, earth. So in that place, you start to get a chemistry of even more femininity. You get a magnetic field. So when these come together, air, fire, fire, air, and earth, water, water, earth, we have the balance of our mind, body, spirit, and soul. The body loves the soul. It's the house of it. The soul needs a body. Your, your mind loves to get the energy, needs that. And fire needs space, loves air. If you've ever put a bunch of air in your fireplace. So this energy is cardinal. It's cardinal in that language because it's masculine. Fire, fire it's, it's masculine, two archetypes coming together. It creates a, almost a bond. You can see the polarity there. It's a, it's a strong amount of masculine energy there, as opposed to a strong amount of feminine energy. So it was, Brand's view then, as he was developing this system, that he, this was now going into new territory where fundamentally we all have a mind, body, spirit, and soul. And we have an outer journey sometimes and we have an inner journey sometimes, don't we? Sometimes we are having to go out into the world and be, have, a, have a mind and, and be a ruler. And you can see it has its own journey to follow passion and then follow your greatness and get results, your earth air. That's that orange area that comes right down there. That's a fixed place. It's a destiny driven, goal oriented. Likewise, sometimes you're on the inner journey. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to go to sleep. You have a water air, the child, you have an observing. That's this blue area that comes down into the body, and then goes into fun, and then goes into water, air, and so forth. 
the more you go down these archetypes, you go down the rabbit hole into some pretty interesting energies. So it was his view that we're here to evolve by going either on an outer journey or inner journey. And that that process of evolution is informed throughout this whole thing. And sometimes we find ourselves in the shadow side. Sometimes we're getting too much for ourselves to know it all, air, water, being too strict, too disciplined. He needs to lighten up, remember? So he needs to fool. That's what the orange is coming down here. You got the fool. The fool needs to get his head in the game sometimes. Otherwise, he's going to be getting fines. He needs to have a little bit of willing. So that's why there's an orange. Each one of these, when they're in the shadow side, when water, air, as I said, the child is frightened, they need structure and security. The matriarch, this wise woman, earth, air, is too strict if she's in her shadow side. So she needs to have more childlike appreciation, lighten and to be a little bit more in her feelings. So each one of these start to have a shadow side that emerges, especially when the soul or the spirit or the mind or the body start to dysfunction in some way. I mean, you can just imagine if you're a ruler and your air fire, your space, your enlightenment isn't working that day. You're getting too much in your head. So it's really worth checking out Brand's book too. I recommend for further reading, you got Richard Gardner, you can go on online, you can go Tamo, you can look at the system. Brand has the nature of personality you can find on Amazon. It's a really cool journey because the journey of reading this book is not just a philosophy. It's an experience that allows you to see how energy works. And this system isn't just esoteric. It is a practical, pragmatic system that has been adopted by the Institute of Hand Analysis to organize people, as, you, as I just showed you. I'm from that institute. And I've been working with this, uh, this way of describing people for uh, almost 14 years. And when you organize people by hand shape, then you, you start to recognize all the air fire people have these long fingers and crazy lines, and they all seem to be pretty brilliant. Their hand shows their elemental type. And different hands show different elemental types. And so you can organize, and I have 20,000 hands on my computer, so you can see all the people that are highly structured, like Richard Branson, right? Or some people that aren't, like Samantha B, or the people that are more fiery and fun and zesty in their nature. So like Gwen Stefani, or Cindy Lauper, Samantha B, Adele, Rihanna. Let's have them run a company to take a SpaceX. See how well they're going to do. Not so great. Let's get Richard Branson on a stage to, ex to express his feelings. Not so great. They each have a different role in our life. And in this way, by understanding the system, you're understanding people. And you're able to understand and appreciate that we all have a different role. We all have a different chemistry. And in this way, we can grow up a little bit by integrating these different energies as well to see the value of what their use is in our life. Okay, so I would like to answer any questions on it. I hope that that has been a good introduction of a one hour survey as much as I can give of an incredibly intricate system that is more than 300 pages, at least in, in Brand's book, and you can just go on and on. So does anyone have any questions about it? I would like to field now anything that has also just come up for you or any insights that you have around this. 
Uh, Graham, you have your hand up. Or Elise, do you have any uh, questions? Yeah, I have a comment. Go for it. Okay. Uh, years ago, we had Bernard Jensen's now out of print book, The Chemistry of Man. And he went through the elements on the periodic table. And he said, when a person is high in this, you're going to have a certain personality. And when they're high in that, I may have mentioned it to you last week. Mm -hmm. um, and I found it extremely fascinating. And I've heard that Russell J. Gould has recently made a different chart, periodic chart of elements. And everybody has remarked that it's amazing. Uh, Russell J. Gould, if you don't know, is uh, the official US Postmaster General. And you can find stuff online about him. But uh, he, he's, a, he's got a brilliant mind. And um, the other thing that this reminded me of was uh, Josh Axe, who is a natural functional medicine doctor out of Texas. And he has from what I hear, studied the five elements and said they're extremely valuable in <clears throat> helping people's health. Um, I also was reminded of my study of Ayurvedic medicine, where they study, are you too moist? Are you too dry? Mm -hmm. uh, what foods go with a person? Um, you know, if, if you're too wet, you can have, you know, a yeast problem, and then you want to have hot and heating foods and foods that dry you out. And so to me, you know, the, the value of the Eastern model of health is, is incredible, you know, where they understood the electrical system, the meridians, the chakras, and they were able to balance people uh, very, but working with nature, working with the elements of nature. And to me, this is very valuable um, because of the other things that I've studied, this kind of adds another piece to that puzzle. Thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, thank you for saying that. And I appreciate the sources. I'll check them out. Uh, it was um, certainly what you see when things get out of balance is the shadow side emerge, right? So a water earth becomes depressed and air fire becomes zany and ADD and, uh, and earth air becomes strict, right? But these are real phenomena that happen to anybody at any time. Everyone is part of the all 12 elements. And it, at any point, they can get stuck in one of those. That would be called the shadow side. They get stuck in an energy or stuck in a negative experience of life. And that gets, the system shows how to get unstuck. What do you need to add yes. if you have that earth air, if you're too strict? How do you get right. out of that strictness? And anything that you can do to bring more water, air, childlike play or anything, you find a real phenomenon in your own psychology, as well as whatever a child does that would bring out the earth air to go into a virtue. And it was to comment then on, well, why, why don't we have five elements? Well, we do actually. So this, this uh, it's the view, uh, we were just having a debate about this and I credit Mo. Um, Mo, why don't you just say what's your version, because I think your version of ether, because I posed this question over to you, of how ether represents in the system. It was beautiful the way you said it, and I'd rather hear it from the horse's mouth. Oh, well, I mean, the thing is, my idea of ether, it, 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 it basically comes from ceremonial magic, yeah, and from the Golden Dawn tradition, things like that. So it's not quite the same as the five element system in sort of like the Eastern systems, you know, uh, but uh, the ether in the golden dawn system was a uh, kind of uh, almost like an over element, you know? Uh, so you have the four elements and then you have ether and, and rather than uh, ether simply being a, it's, a, it's kind of, it seems difficult to say what ether is, but then you see that it's actually almost like a, a, an all encompassing, uh, uh, an all encompassing pattern that all of the elements uh, fall within. And so it's almost like the circulation of all of the, all of the energies as a whole. And it's like, so it's like looking at a different dimension of things. It's a, it's a, so it's taking the elemental phenomenon, but it's seeing it from a dimension of wholeness rather than from of, 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 of uh, separate particularities. Yeah. Um, in fact, it's implicit in the whole thing because the whole, the elements are of course, all, all the time relating to each other and circulating. Yeah. 
but we don't always experience it like, like that for ourselves. But the actual um, the actual um, element of ether in that in the magical uh, view would be that uh, uh, sort of like a holistic integrating pattern in which the, all of the elements actually exist in that way. So that that's basically how you'd see ether magically anyway. Yeah, and, and, and I was asking, uh, how do you cultivate more ether? Well, what we actually see is when the more you get out of the shadow side, the more elevated the state of your mind is, mm -hmm. or a sense of transcendence. And it's part of our evolution that as a reward or our gauge to know where we are in that spectrum. And I would say, uh, and it was the view that the more we go into this exalted place, we're getting more into that ether zone, into heaven on earth, right? So. Yeah. And, and this does reveal a, a, a natural um, uh, a chemistry that is throughout all of these elements. And that's, that's kind of embodying or these, the, what the transit of these, these energies are transiting because of ether is one way you could describe that. Yeah, and in a way, what we're doing is we're, we're, what we're in the process of coming, of coming into relationship or back into relationship in a sense. So because all, all of the elements want relationship, they are all a, a kind of an expression of this sort of um, in, interdependence and interrelationship of different things. Uh, and so, in a sense, by coming into virtue, by coming back into virtue, what we're doing is coming back into relationship and we're coming back into relationship with life, with different parts of ourself. And so there's this recollection, in a sense, of wholeness in a way. Yeah. Yeah. So there's an evolutionary model that you know we're all we're here to evolve we're not here to just get stuck right no. and, and everything's evolving hmm. or devolving but it's all in in that place right and this is a this this diagram shows the nature of evolution itself especially when brand gets involved and he starts talking about how these cardinals work in in support of our evolution because ultimately these cardinal archetypes that I was telling you about, the pure masculine, air, air, fire, fire, air, as opposed to pure feminine, water, earth, earth, water, our mind, spirit, body, and soul. Those are here to evolve. And we, they, they are who we are. And we're here to experience an outer world or an inner journey. And we're supposed to go through these experiences as well as the difficulties, the shadow sides. We're supposed to go through that. Otherwise, we wouldn't have them. And knowing that is uh, all part of a wisdom of how to live life in, its, in, in a place where you are ultimately coming to the ether, coming to a place of heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. Brand, do you have any two cents that you would like to add? And also, it would be great if everyone hears your voice since you've also done such a great work. If you haven't, by the way, um, I said, I'm not here to sell anything. I'm here to just expose this brilliant system. But I do recommend if you are interested in learning more about this, that you go on to Amazon. He has his book out, uh, which is the nature of uh, personality. I can show it to you just so that you know that this exists. And uh, there is a very deep exploration of what we just talked. You can get on Kindle. Um, and it's about several hundred pages of him going archetype by archetype and seeing the relationships of these archetypes to each other and how important the mind, body, and spirit is first. And once you get a, get a idea that that is actually an energy, the mind, the body, the spirit, and, and soul, those are different energies. And if you play with that idea, then something starts to emerge as a pattern of how you can then see where your soul is out and when it's not, what's the shadow side, what it looks like when you're not in, when the soul is not out, what it looks like when your spirit's not out, what it looks like when you're not connected to your body and so forth. So there's a too much, too little story in all of those energy archetypes. And he explores the, these virtues quite magnificent in a very magnificent way. Bran, do you want to say something? Uh, you're on mute, sir. I have to ask you to unmute. Okay, yeah, what I want to say is that this whole system's like this big electrical magnetic imprint, 
And you could almost think of it as the universe being like that and the universe coming down. And our mind is so incredible. I mean, it's the most, um, it's the most incredible discovery actually in the universe. The mind is so complicated and so many neurons relating to things. So we tend to get into this system and we get caught up with certain energies. And as Brent was saying, it's the shadow energies that stop us going forward in life. And so we end up um, kind of identifying with certain archetypes as Brent showed on his list. And so we identify those and in some ways, it's a good thing to identify because it gives you a purpose in life to work with that archetype. But it's also narrowing your potential. And um, we need to be aware of all these other things because that's what evolution is about. And we need to follow those things and explore them and, and really, um, live the magic that life has to offer us. So that's my um, two cents for now. <laughs> right, thank you. I put the name of uh, Tamo, so you can look up Tamo De Jong uh, if you're interested in learning more about his. He's got a very poetic look. Um, uh, Mo has done a channel as well around Tamo. Uh, you could ch check out his videos. Uh, Brand has stuff that you can look out online. Richard Gardner is also a, um, uh, a good study of this type of work. And he has another take on it around the nature of love in itself and the chemistry that we're here to just enjoy all of these energies. So, um, okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? Okay. Oh. Okay, then uh, I thank you for your audience. It is a privilege to be able to express um, this knowledge, this wisdom. It's something that I, I, I adore. And I don't think it's something for you to believe or not believe, it's just something to experience. And it's phenomenal when you use language in the way that um, this system offers to really experience the different sides of reality in a categorical systematic way that will inform everything you're going to do it this this book uh, uh tamo's work and then later brand um it it, it changes you it it, it, uh, it has a kind of an alchemy just in understanding the way it works and um i'm deeply deeply appreciative to have uh, uh these guys available to answer my questions too all right, then I'll close the session. I'll put the recording of this so you can listen also online on the Sacred Geometry site. So you can just go on Facebook to Sacred Geometry and I'll put the, the recording also on YouTube. You can also follow me on Grinning. And I hope that you enjoyed this great introduction, I hope. Yeah. And, and thank you, Brandon Mo, for also be, uh, being available. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank Thank you very much, Brent. Okay. All right, ciao, ciao. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. <laughs>